D8 kitten. Nope, not a kitten. Just my imagination. Where was I? Oh, right. ADHD, also known as ADD or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is most commonly associated with when I zone out and forget about the things and tap my fingers obsessively. But ADHD is much more than that. It has a wide range of myths and misconceptions and also vague unknown truths. And as someone who is diagnosed with severe ADHD at nine years old, I have been through thick and thin, just trying to discover what all of these are, what is true, what's not, what exactly is going on in my brain. And today, whether or not you have ADHD, I hope I can make some of the answers I fought so hard to find easier for you to find by going over a few things. First, how ADHD works scientifically. What is the neurobiology of it? What causes it and what perpetuates it? Next, we'll dive into how it affects us physically on the outside and what others see. What exactly is all that neurobiology doing to us out here? Before finally be finishing off with what we can do in the future, how we move forward and how we help whether or not you or I or anyone has or doesn't have ADHD. So sit back, try to relax, and let's jump right into the magical world of ADHD. Kitten, nope, still not a kitten. It's never a kitten. Luckily for me, this isn't about kittens. It's about ADHD. And to really start understanding the depths that ADHD goes to, we need to start with the neurobiology. So what's going on in my brain? Well, according to the ADHD Institute, ADHD is typically associated with some structural abnormalities in the brain. Okay, and that means, well, to put it simply, it falls down into two categories, chemical release and pathway breaks. We'll start with chemical release. According to a paper published by the ADHD Institute in 2019, levels of available dopamine receptor and transporter molecules are typically lower in some parts of the brain in adults with ADHD. Okay, and that means? Well, to put it more simply and unpack all that gobbledygook, in your neurotypical person's brain, when neurons fire and send signals, there's a little boost of dopamine or serotonin that helps them go woo, woo, from one point to the next. But in my brain, or anyone with ADHDs, those chemicals don't get released, not effectively at least. And that means it's much harder for our neurons to get from point A to point B. But the bigger and more prominent reason is pathway breaks. Now this is harder to understand, but think of it like this. Whenever I tell myself to do anything, neurons in my brain travel through neural pathways to send the signal for me to do that thing. So whenever I say, hey, move a finger, neurons are firing in my brain and traveling across the neural pathways. So in your neurotypical person's brain, your neuron can just go right down the roadway to where they want to be. But if you have ADHD, uh-oh, the road has suddenly collapsed in on itself which means, of course, that we have to take the long, long, long way around. And that's not nearly 
as effective. Who would have guessed? So now that you kind of understand how neurologically our brains are atypical, what does that translate to on the outside? What does all of this have to do with the fact that I can't pay attention to my homework for more than two seconds? Well, quite simply, there are three main classes of effect that ADHD people experience. Now, of course, ADHD affects people in many more than just three ways, but for the sake of simplicity, I've narrowed it down to three. The inattentive, the hyperactive, and the in-between. So let's start with the inattentive. So when I look at my schoolwork and I go, I'm going to do my schoolwork. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Oh, hey, what's this over here? That is basically my neuron struggling to get from here to here. Now, obviously, it's many neurons and not nearly this simple. But in the time that it's taking my neuron to get from point A to point B, when it goes on that detour, it might find a little something else that it enjoys to do better. And so I get distracted and fall into a YouTube well of monkeys casting resin as tiny little clippies for hours. Definitely not personal experience. <laughs> but of course, there's more than just being inattentive to ADHD. The H, of course hyperactivity. Now, hyperactivity is commonly perceived as just that, hyperactive. You're extra twitchy, you're bouncy, you're, you do lots of sports, but it can show itself in more ways than just these. For instance, in girls, hyperactivity activity predominantly shows itself in being overly talkative and social. So if you know someone who just likes to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, chances are they might have ADHD. And of course, while not everyone can be fully hyperactive or fully be distracted, people fall far enough towards either side that they can be grouped into these categories. However, most people are going to fall into the middle, the in-betweeners. Now, this is what I am, and while I do lean towards the inattentive side, I have signs of hyperactivity too. We get the best of both worlds, if you can consider it the best, both distracted and awkwardly fidgety. We don't know what to do with ourselves, and that's all I can say. So. That's how ADHD affects us in our everyday lives. But what about the future? What can we do to help deal with these things? Well, luckily for us, we live in an era of medical technology and advancements, which means it's easier than ever to help manage and treat ADHD. According to the CDC, the two most common methods of treatment are medication and behavioral therapy. Now, medication like Adderall, Vyvanse, and Stratera is just a daily pill that you can take to help you focus. It increases the amount. Typically, these pills increase the amount of serotonin and dopamine released in the brain, making it easier for you to focus. And another option is behavioral therapy. Now, this is normally used for young children who can't take medication or those compromised in some other way who can't take medication. But it is still quite effective, especially at younger ages. Now, of course, the CDC is doing way more than this with their Focus for the Future initiative. Now, this does everything from understanding ADHD to raising awareness, providing accessible treatment, and sharing their findings with the medical community for free. Now, this is amazing and extremely important because it means that if I don't know anything, if I'm confused and don't have any way to get help, just a quick search will give me so many answers and more. 
So now we know a bit about what ADHD is scientifically, how it affects us, and what we can do going forward. So I hope that you leave here today and you paid at least a little attention to my speech. I know I probably would fail greatly, but hey, what can I say? And of course, thank you. Oh, there's the cat. I guess it wasn't my imagination after all. ADHD. Cats distract me.